What's up, party people? It's Keys Dan with RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com, coming to you live and in living color from the Radio What Studios. And this is my podcast, What Makes You Smarter? It's an extension of the RadioWhat.com internet radio station that I've been running for quite some time. And if you need DJ services, where do you go? DJLittleRock.com. Check availability, get a free price quote, and maybe you can have me at your next event. I like to play for the people. If you want to tell your story, I encourage you to check out my other podcast, What Makes You Famous. Find it everywhere using the hashtag What Makes You Famous. Now, on with the show. Today on the program, 10 things you need to know today for Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. 10 things you need to know today. Number one, Senate passes $484 billion coronavirus relief package. Republicans and Democrats reached a deal on another coronavirus relief package, which includes $310 billion to replenish the Paycheck Protection Program, providing loans to small businesses. The deal also includes $75 billion for hospitals and healthcare workers and $25 billion to help expand COVID-19 testing, which public health experts say is a critical component to any plan to reopen the economy. The Senate promptly approved the bill, which has a total cost of $484 billion, a dispute over how to handle the effort to ramp up testing for the virus had held up the legislation. The House plans to vote on the package on Thursday. President Trump signaled he would sign the compromise. This is according to CNN. Number two, CDC director warns second coronavirus wave could hit in flu season. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention director Robert Redfield warned on Tuesday that a second coronavirus wave in winter could be, quote, even more difficult than the one we just went through, end quote. He said in an interview with the Washington Post that the next wave could coincide with the beginning of flu season, overwhelming hospitals. Redfield said that federal and state officials must use the next few months to prepare for winter, including encouraging social distancing even as stay-at-home orders are lifted and launching a push in the fall to encourage people to get flu shots. Redfield said protests calling for states to lift stay-at-home orders are, quote, not helpful, end quote. Redfield said he and other members of the White House Coronavirus Task Force firmly support social distancing, citing, quote, the enormous impact that it's had on this outbreak in our nation, end quote. This is according to the Washington Post. Number three, California autopsy finds first known U.S. coronavirus death was February 6th. Officials in Santa Clara County, California, announced on Tuesday that autopsies had uncovered three early COVID-19 coronavirus deaths. The cases included a person who died at home on February 6th, three weeks before the earliest known U.S. coronavirus death was recorded in Kirkland, Washington. The three, quote, died at home during a time when very limited testing was available only through the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, end quote, the county said. Deaths typically occur a month after exposure, so the virus could have reached the U.S. by early January. The news came as California became the first state to recommend testing for the people who are not showing coronavirus symptoms but work in high-risk places, including nursing homes and prisons, now that major labs say they have capacity to run more tests. This is according to the San Francisco Chronicle and Los Angeles Times. Number four, Trump says he will halt new green cards for 60 days. President Trump on Tuesday provided details on a tweet in which he vowed to, quote, suspend immigration, end quote, saying that he would order a 60-day halt in issuing green cards to keep people seeking permanent residency from immigrating to the United States during the coronavirus crisis. He framed the policy as a way to protect American jobs during an unprecedented surge of unemployment caused by coronavirus shutdowns. 
and to prevent people infected with COVID-19 from entering the U.S. Trump decided not to suspend guest worker programs after business groups argued that cutting off access to foreign labor would only damage the economy. Some critics called the move an attempt to distract from Trump's handling of the coronavirus outbreak. Others said it would merely hamper the economy recovery because of all the vital contributions made by immigrant entrepreneurs and skilled workers. This is according to the New York Times and the Washington Post. Number five, Milwaukee finds seven people infected with COVID-19 during voting. Milwaukee's top public health officials said Tuesday that at least seven people appear to have been infected with the COVID-19 coronavirus during activities associated with Wisconsin's April 7th election. Six of the patients were voters and one was a poll worker. Quote, as of today, we have identified seven individuals that contracted, or at least it appears, COVID-19 through election-related activities, end quote, said Jeanette Kowalik, the city's health commissioner. Governor Tony Evers, Democrat, tried at the last minute to postpone in-person voting, but he was overruled by the Wisconsin Supreme Court. About 400,000 people wound up voting in person. Also on Tuesday, Wisconsin Republican lawmakers filed a lawsuit against Evers over his stay-at-home order in the latest sign of the increasing politicization of the fight to contain the pandemic. This is according to NPR. Number six, poll. Most Americans think large gatherings will be unsafe into summer. A Washington Post University of Maryland poll released Tuesday found that only 10% of respondents believe gatherings of 10 or more people will be safe to attend by the end of April. 21% said they expected these gatherings to be safe by the end of May, but 65% said they don't expect them to be safe until the end of June or later. This includes 20% who said the end of June, 13% who said the end of July, and 19% who said later in 2020, and 13% who said longer. The poll came as protests against stay-at-home orders spread in some states, even though a recent poll found that 66% of Americans are more concerned that coronavirus restrictions will be lifted too soon rather than not soon enough. This is according to the Washington Post. Number seven, Amazon, Target, workers use sick outs to demand more virus protections. Hundreds of Amazon and Target workers are starting a nationwide wave of sick outs to call attention to what they described as inadequate efforts to protect employees from the coronavirus pandemic. Amazon warehouse workers went first with more than 300 calling in sick on Tuesday, accusing the company of failing to provide enough face masks to workers and conduct regular temperature checks. The nationwide protest at 50 locations followed walkouts over working conditions at several Amazon warehouses. The protesters' demand, including shutting down any facility with coronavirus cases and providing workers there with testing and two weeks of pay. Target workers are planning their sick out for May 1st. This is according to USA Today and The Guardian. Number eight, U.S. warships enter disputed South China Sea waters. U.S. warships have entered disputed waters in the South China Sea off Malaysia, escalating tensions between Washington and Beijing. The New York Times reported Tuesday, citing military analysts. The vessels, an amphibious assault ship, and the guided missile cruiser Bunker Hill cruised into the area after a Chinese government ship spent days following a Malaysian state oil company vessel that was conducting exploratory drilling. Beijing has continued its displays of force in the South China Sea in recent months, even as it scrambled to contain the COVID-19 coronavirus outbreak that started within its borders. Quote, it's a quite deliberate Chinese strategy to try to maximize what they perceive as being a moment of distraction, end quote, said Peter Jennings, executive director of the Australian Strategic Policy Institute. This is according to the New York Times. 
Number nine, Senate panel reaffirms conclusion that Russia meddled in 2016 election. The Senate Intelligence Committee on Tuesday released a bipartisan report confirming its conclusion that Russia interfered in the 2016 election, aiming to help Donald Trump win the presidency. The panel, supporting the intelligence community's January 2017 assessment, cited, quote, specific intelligence, end quote, that Russian President Vladimir Putin, quote, approved and directed, end quote, some of the Kremlin's efforts. The report from a Republican-led panel chaired by Senator Richard Burr, Republican North Carolina, undercut President Trump's repeated attempts to dismiss allegations that Russia tried to help his campaign as a, quote, hoax, end quote, fueled by Democrats and, quote, deep state, end quote, bureaucrats. Senator Mark Warner, Democrat Virginia, the panel's vice chairman, said there was, quote, no reason to doubt that the Russian success in 2016 is leading them to try it again in 2020. End quote. This is according to Politico. Number 10. Germany cancels Oktoberfest due to pandemic. German authorities announced Tuesday that they were canceling this year's Oktoberfest due to the coronavirus pandemic. Quote, it hurts. It's such a pity. End quote, said Marcus Soder, Bavaria's minister president. Quote, we have agreed that the risk is simply too high. End quote. Soder announced the plan in a news conference with Dieter Reiter, Munich's Lord Mayor. Nearly 6 million visitors had been expected to attend the German Beer Festival, which was scheduled for September 19th through October 4th. Authorities feared that the coronavirus could spread quickly through crowds packed into beer tents and other cramped venues in Munich during the festival. Clemens Bachmann-Gartner, the head of Oktoberfest, said the decision, quote, saddened us all, end quote, but it was the right thing to do. Spain canceled its famous running of the bulls in July. This is according to USA Today and the Associated Press. That's 10 things you need to know today for Wednesday, April 22nd, 2020. Thank you for listening. This has been What Makes You Smarter. Find it everywhere using the hashtag What Makes You Smarter. If you want to tell your story or hear other stories, I encourage you to check out my other podcast, What Makes You Famous. Find it everywhere using the hashtag, What Makes You Famous. That's it for me. It's Keys Dan, RadioWhat.com, DJLittleRock.com. Peace. I'm out of here. If you like what you hear, I encourage you to follow What Makes You Smarter on social media. Find it on Facebook at What Makes You Smarter, Instagram at What Makes You Smarter, Twitter at Smarter What, and YouTube username keys dan leave what makes you smarter podcast a review and subscribe listen to what makes you smarter podcast on spotify itunes youtube stitcher google podcast and podcast addict my personal favorite learn with me on my podcast what makes you smarter and if you'd like to tell your story i encourage you to check out my other podcast what makes you famous find it everywhere using the hashtag what makes you famous call 501-470-6386 and leave a message to set up a time for what makes you famous support what makes you smarter podcast using the paypal paypal.me forward slash keys dan email info at radio what.com what makes you smarter is a production of keys dan enterprises incorporated at keys dan.com thank you for listening Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening.